Lock-in is very bad, but I think we're talking about it too much. And I don't think we have a good definition for what lock-in actually is. To me, lock-in means work that was done that prevents you from moving somewhere else. And this is why I think lock-in versus built-in is such a massive difference. I'm gonna use the example of Next in Vercel because it's the one I'm most familiar with. I will say they're a sponsor of the channel. They have no idea I'm making this video. They are not sponsoring this video. They're probably not even going to endorse most of the things I say, but this isn't about what they think. This is about how we should think when we make these decisions. So the first, an example of something people say is lock-in are a lot of the new features in Next.js, such as the ability to pick which runtime your applications deploy in. In a Next app running on Vercel, switching between static, Lambda, and Edge is as simple as exporting a different variable in the given route. And you have a bunch of other variables to make it come out of static. In fact, it's actually the default. So what's the problem here? The concern that I hear and see often is that a lot of these new features only work on Vercel, but these features are things that are in Next. And it kind of feels strange that there are features built into Next and functionality that's part of Next.js itself that is only accessible on Vercel. But I'm gonna make an argument on why this is okay. The reason isn't because it's good for Next.js to add a bunch of things that are Vercel only. It's cause it's good for Vercel to be able to innovate and continue to improve the developer experience of React without introducing significant amounts of technology that we have to work with that are Vercel specific. There is no reason the stuff that Next does wouldn't be deployable on Netlify in the future, on SST in the future, on any of these other solutions. And the code that you're writing isn't Vercel specific, it's certain parts of the functionality in export behaviors that make Vercel the best platform. But this has never been Vercel is the only way to use Next. It's always been Vercel's the best way to use Next. And none of the code I write that's locked into Vercel is even really code. I haven't written a function before or, a, or an endpoint or a React component that only works on Vercel. The code I write and the tech I build isn't locked in. It's taking advantage of things that are built in. If I wanted to deploy on edge on something else, Next isn't preventing me from doing that. In fact, it's actually helping me do that. And this is why I'm so frustrated. It feels like people are mistaking work that's done for you for work you have to do. And once you've done certain work that buys into a platform, it becomes so much harder to leave. Like if you're using DynamoDB or Aurora on AWS, good luck moving. But if you're using Next.js on Vercel, you can absolutely move. You'll leave some features behind and you might not love leaving those features behind, but those things will all still work in other environments. There is nothing about Next that's inherently locked into Vercel. And that's why we see projects like Open Next that keep spinning up and taking advantage of the open nature of Next.js, making it easier to get all of these features when deploying on other solutions. This is a good thing. It's awesome that Next.js is giving us incredible new features without locking us in to new syntaxes or behaviors or things that are specific to Vercel. It would have been very easy for them to have a new syntax for defining files that makes it really hard to run next in other places, but they haven't done that. They haven't made decisions to lock you into Vercel. They've made decisions to make next as good as possible on Vercel, but none of those are additional work you have to do. All of them are work you don't have to do. It's similar to my argument with TRPC, where TRPC isn't a better alternative to GraphQL, it is a smaller subset of GraphQL. And the things you'd have to do to move from TRPC to GraphQL are just the things you'd have to do to implement GraphQL in the first place. In order to take a bunch of TRPC stuff and put it in GraphQL, you'd have to define a resolver, build your schema, and then call those functions in the right places in that schema. It's the exact same work you'd do if you started with GraphQL in the first place. And if you were to take Next.js or take something else that isn't Next.js and deploy it on other infrastructure the same way Vercel deploys it for you, the work isn't removing things that are part of Next or part of Vercel. The work is adding the things that are built in there. Moving from something with good built-ins to something without them is not a destructive process. It's an additive one. And this is to me where the biggest difference lies. Lock-in is when you have to remove things to move. Built-in is when you have to add things to move. And this is why it's hard for me to entertain complaints about lock-in on Vercel, because I don't see it that way. I see it as saving me engineering cost and time and not 
costing me a bunch if I have to move off in the future. There's no reason I can't take any of the next steps I've built and just throw them on a VPS, except I won't get the edge deployments that I love so much. I won't get the cache behaviors that I love so much. And if I want those, I can build them just like I would have had to before Vercel even existed. And this is why I'm not so fond of the lock-in argument. If you want to hear more about me talking about Vercel's lock-in in particular, I have a whole video dedicated to just that that I'm going to pin in the corner here. Check that out if you haven't already. And don't hesitate so much when you're trying out these solutions. They bring benefits and we like them for a reason. And it's not that hard to move off of these things, especially if you pick standards. Don't use Hasura. Thank you as always. Peace notes.